Good morning, folks. This is Deb Delapiana. And you know, what could be a better way to start your day than coffee with me and an update on the GOP criminal enterprise? Yesterday was kind of an eventful day here for us. <clears throat> um, and you know, maybe this is going to be 10 minutes or maybe it's going to be longer. We're just going to see how this progresses. So let's talk a little bit about what transpired yesterday. We're gonna we're gonna start. We're gonna start right here. So hang on a minute. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. This is always a challenge for me before eight o'clock. Sorry, hang on. That's coming. And here we go. This is Letitia James who has been working feverishly on uh, one of the investigations, one of the many investigations of Donald Trump. And, you know, folks, no, these aren't witch hunts, even though the GOP wants to tell you they are. You will see a witch hunt if they are returned to power in November because they intend to impeach Joe Biden. That's what a witch hunt looks like because he's done absolutely nothing to be impeached for. OK, but I digress. Yesterday in New York, Letitia James sued Donald Trump and three of his children for fraud for the way they have run the Trump dynasty business. It's a civil lawsuit. There aren't any criminal charges. Um, And while, you know, Donald Trump is alleging, there they are, see, there they are, the Grifter family Robinson right there. While Donald Trump is alleging that Letitia James is corrupt, she uh, had also acknowledged during her press conference announcing the suit that she would face criticism that a lawsuit is partisan. That's, you know, what they do. Um, and this investigation has been three years in the making. And it only started after Michael Cohen testified before Congress about Donald Trump's conduct. Michael Cohen went to, went to jail, by the way. So according to her press conference, the Trump operation, quote, repeatedly and consistently manipulated the value of assets in order to win favorable loan terms from banks and reduce tax payments. And it was all in violation of New York state law. This is not a federal case. This is a New York state case. But this lawsuit would ban Donald Trump from doing business in New York ever again. She's seeking $250 million in penalties and wants him doing absolutely no business in the state of New York anymore. And it also would prevent Donald Trump, his minions, and his organization from ever buying real estate in New York for a term of five years. She did state, however, however, that the lawsuit filed in civil court uh, their entire operation violated both state and federal laws. She said she sent a criminal, she's being, you know, sorry, blah. She is sending a criminal referral to the US Justice Department. So his culpability in all of this is not over yet. Um, this is a civil case, it's money related, just like Trump University was. Um, but it is going to be referred for a criminal investigation. And according to James, this is how it worked. She said his business practices were fraudulent, including representing that Mr. Trump had cash on hand that he did not have. And he also egregiously inflated the market value of his real estate holdings in New York State and in Florida. 
um, at 40 Wall Street in Manhattan. They repeatedly allege the property's value was ranging from 200 to 220 million. Um, but they inflated the value of that property to 500 million in order to gain unfair advantages with lenders and insurers doing business with his firm. It was not done by mistake. It was clear fraud. Um, in another instance, they stated that a building was 30,000 square feet when it was actually only 10,000 square feet, which grossly inflated the, um, the value of the property. So New York and Florida aren't the only targets. Mar-a-Lago is included in this, by the way. But the Chicago Tribune, which I also subscribe to, is advising everyone that her multi-million dollar fraud lawsuit uh, also involves Trump International Hotel and Tower in Chicago. When he needed collateral, he and his team placed a high value on the property. And when he wanted a tax break, he called the property worthless. Whatever Donnie Tiny Hands needed to line his pockets even more than he already had is what he did. Um, so, with this property, uh, it's owned officially by 401 North Wabash Venture LLC. It was appraised at 133 million by Deutsche Bank. And uh, it lent Trump money for the project, but he gave a different story saying it was worthless when he filed his taxes. I don't know how eventually he didn't think he was going to get caught on this one, but Donnie here and his family have been grifting off the American public for a very long time. He's grifting off the American public when he was raising money to fight his stolen election. He never used any of that money for any of that bullshit. He used that to probably pay down his personal loans or just completely put the money in his pocket. These people are not okay, all right? In an attempt to try to avoid detection, Trump and the Trump Organization intentionally didn't include the skyscraper in his various statements of financial condition so that it wouldn't expose the differing values he gave the property. So, you know, he's trying to cover all of this up. And of course, poor Donnie, he is such a victim of the system. But that wasn't the only bad news that Donnie got yesterday because the appeals court you know, the whole special master. Yeah. Well, the whole special master thing, that's kind of blowing up in Donnie's face too, because uh, the special master wants him to testify about declassifying the documents and Donald Trump and his team do not want to do that because they would have to testify under oath and if they lie under oath, then he's also subject to perjury charges. And as we all know, he's a liar. So he hasn't answered those questions yet. So we're going to see where this goes. But be that as it may, the Department of Justice, led by Merrick Garland, um, appealed to the U.S. Court of Appeals to the 11th Circuit. And they took Judge Cannon, who is clearly a Trump acolyte, making the egregious ruling on the special master to begin with, which is totally outside the scope of the law, by the way. She's got no business being on the bench. But then again, Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump didn't care that the majority of the freaking judges they put in, the right-wing judges, were qualified or adept. What they cared about was that they would carry out his desires. And the fact of the matter is that judge also stated that she gave Donald Trump extra weight because he was the president. Well, actually, her job is to follow the rule of fucking law. Doesn't matter what Donald Trump was. Doesn't matter if Donald Trump came down in the cloud looking like Jesus H. Christ on a raft. That's not what her job is. But this judge, uh, this actually, I believe it's a, 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 it might be a panel of judges. I don't really know, but it's a federal appeals court. And they gave a 29-page opinion yesterday and agreed with the Justice Department that the federal district court in South Florida erred in blocking the investigators' use of the classified records and taking those documents and giving them to an outside arbiter, which would be the special master. Here is 
the statement that they made. For our part, we cannot discern why Trump would have an individual interest in or need for any of the 100 documents with classification markings. Uh, the three judges, so it is Judge Robin Rosenbaum, Britt Grant, and Andrew Brasher said. Classified documents are marked to show they are classified, for instance, with their classification level. And he has not, by the way, successfully made a case for why he would need those documents. So they have now ordered those documents returned to the DOJ so that the investigation can proceed. Okay, ignore that. Pretend you don't even see that shit. This is always a real thrill for me, doing this screen sharing shit. Um, but that didn't stop Donald here from going on to Sean Hannity show and claiming that President is can declassify documents, quote, even by thinking about it. That is actually not the way it worked. There is a process for this. And I want you to understand this. The people who classified those documents to begin with classified them for a reason. So if this were going through a declassification process, they would have some input into this, okay? Donald Trump, regardless of what people want you to believe and regardless of what he is feeding the public, is not the king. So that's bullshit. We're going to just talk a little bit here about the continuing saga of Donald Trump's criminal enterprise. Mike Lindell, who whined incessantly that they interrupted his fine dining at Hardy's to take his cell phone. Um, he has actually had his cell phone taken uh, as part of the investigation into Tina Peters in Colorado. Uh, but what they are actually looking at is uh, whether Mike Lindell exercised identity theft and damage to a protected computer. As we all know, there was a breach of the Colorado County's voting system. Tina Peters took information off those computers and provided them to Mike Lindell for one of his grand and glorious truth sessions. Um, so, The filings in this uh, warrant for the search, uh, which was filed by Lindell's team on Wednesday uh, as part of his lawsuit to the United States District Court in Minnesota, showed that the DOJ is investigating Lindell for identity theft, intentional damage to a protected computer, and conspiracy to commit identity theft or intentionally damage a protected computer. Uh, the warrant was approved on September 7th. And the search warrant had to be executed before Wednesday, September 21st. And they also approved the search and seizure warrant because they had probable cause. This is how these warrants are gotten. They have to go in front of a judge and prove that they have enough of a case to do it. So Mike Lindell, he's another whining little sack of shit who has spent the better part of his time holding these truth conferences where he alleges he's going to show us all of the evidence that proves that the election was stolen. He is actually up in arms at Donald hasn't been reinstated yet. Mike Lindell is a crackhead, okay? And he's also worthy of being investigated, folks. I'm, I'm really sorry about this, but this shit, this stuff can't be allowed to go, okay? I, I don't care what anyone says about it looking partisan. The DOJ, whatever, whatever entities are investigating this, the people in Georgia are investigating the election fraud down there. This all needs to move forward. They need to move forward no matter what anyone is saying. Because we cannot allow, we cannot allow this kind of shit to happen. And by the way, uh, people are saying here that Watergate was different because the Republicans, you know, agreed to do this. Well, bloody, bloody, blah. Let me just tell you something. Republicans had an opportunity to get rid of Donald Trump by participating and isolating him from the party. By participating in the J6 committee, they made a tactical error because Kevin McCarthy is a loser. Okay. And <clears throat> they could have stalled this whole thing, but they they chose not to participate thinking it was going to go away. Well, it didn't. And I'm glad it didn't. Nancy Pelosi made the right call. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. These are just a couple of potting shots. Uh, yesterday, Ted Cruz made himself a video touting the infrastructure bill and how it's going to bring uh, 
jobs and improvements to Texas because they introduced a bipartisan amendment to an omnibus bill. That would be Joe Biden's bill, which Ted Cruz voted against. So here's what we have. We have Senator Cruz who voted against the original package, you know, adding to the pain that went through getting this thing passed to begin with, with this version of the GOP. Uh, and now he wants to take credit for bringing jobs and improving the, the infrastructure of Texas, you know, going on, of course, Fox and making his case. Ted Cruz is another opportunistic parasite on the American public, another opportunistic parasite and a waste of taxpayer dollars every single day of his life. Um, and you know what? He's another guy that should get voted out. Let's move along. This is like a little news session, okay? That's what you can consider it. I'm not going to make a new opening. So we're going to call this, now that we've gone well past 10 minutes, I'm going to call this, you know, uh, some other kind of video, but it's not called short takes anymore. Now, in the House, we have moved to another level here. And this is the reason for the J6 committee to begin with. So let me make this clear, okay? The J6 committee is an investigative arm whose job it is to submit a report and potentially criminal referrals. I will tell you that. Their report is coming. Potentially, you know, criminal referrals to the DOJ. Their other job is to pass legislation to make sure that what happened on January 6, 2021 never happens again. All right, the Electoral College Act was one of the reasons why this happened, giving the um, the uh, vice president that kind of power, put it in the hands of one man, and we all saw what Donald Trump did with Mike Pence. We don't need to go over that ad nauseum. So they did introduce their first bill yesterday, and it was passed in the House, um, passed by a 229 to 203 vote with nine Republicans crossing the aisle to sign on to that bill. The bill was written by Representative Liz Cheney, the perennial thorn in Donald Trump's side, who, by the way, I don't agree with her on any policy issues, but you know what? I give her credit for what she has done here. Uh, and Zoe Lofgren from California, the Democrat, bipartisan bill, explicitly cites the Capitol attack as a reason to amend the Electoral Count Act of 1887, quote, to prevent other future unlawful efforts to overturn presidential elections and to ensure future peaceful transfer of presidential power. Um, they acknowledge that legal challenges are not improper. And, you know, we had it with the Gore election with Bush. Um, it doesn't change any of that, this bill. The bill prevents Congress from illegally choosing the president itself. That's what it does. And this is something that would have happened had Pence cooperated. And let me just say this. A lot of people view Mike Pence as a hero. I don't view him as a hero. He did his job. But I will say this. Mike Pence consulted with an, a judge before he decided what to do. What would have happened had Mike Pence gone along with this? Does anyone think that Mike Pence is beyond reproach? Because he's going to run for president and he's, you know, did what he did, but he's unwilling also to dump Trump. So we have all of these people here enabling a dictator. I mean, people, watch what's happening. The GOP is now, quite frankly, uh, and this is all going to be here, by the way. Uh, this will be in here. And this, this article also includes uh, details on the bill. What else it does? It basically makes the vice presidential role one of an overseer, not the one guy holding all the power, okay? It's this is to protect the will of the people. But let me just say this. The reason only nine people cross the aisle is because they're pissed off that Liz Cheney was involved in the writing of this. But, you know, she's actually the co-chair of the committee. And I don't know why they would think that she would do anything but do what she's doing because she has shown a singular determination 
to make sure that Donald Trump never infects this country with this particular brand of corrupt virus again. And that's what they're basing this on, which only goes to prove one more time. I don't know how many times the GOP has to prove it or how many ways that what they really care about is power, their own. Their own and power. They don't give a damn about this country. They don't give a damn about anybody but their power. And there are still 147 sitting criminals, seditionists in our government, and of 535 legislators running for re-election in November, fully 199 of them ascribed to the, the election was stolen, Donald Trump mantra, okay? We're not out of hot water yet here. You need to vote wisely. And we're going to close with just a final word on Ron DeSatan. Um, I did... I already did a video on him. I'll put the link in here for that video, okay? But new information has come to light beyond the, you know, crafted brochure that is the smoking gun and all of that uh, that shows exactly how they lied to the migrants. But adding insult to injury, another Ron DeSantis move. Operas, operatives linked to DeSantis promised to fly migrants to Delaware. Of oh, Yes, of close, close to Joe Biden's summer home, of course. They've already deposited people on the doorstep of uh, Kamala Harris's house. OK, uh, that was done by Greg Abbott. Uh, but then they left them stranded. So they basically promised them all the stuff, all the same shit they promised the migrants going to Martha's Vineyard uh, and then basically stiffed them. And these people are, are, are distraught. These are not just people coming here to steal our jobs. OK, these are people who came here to escape oppressive regimes. This is done all over the world, by the way. This is done all over the world. Americans can do this if they want. There are American expatriates. Did you know that? People who have chosen to live out the rest of their lives in another country, okay? And they are free to do that, okay? Um, these people are coming here seeking asylum. And as such, they are guaranteed a hearing because that's the way our country is and has always been. But Ron DeSantis, he's going to continue on doing what he's doing until somebody puts a stop to him legally. And that is what has to happen here. He is being investigated, okay? Not only by the state of Massachusetts, but they have encouraged the DOJ to become involved. So that is basically our little news broadcast about the workings of the GOP and Donald Trump. And hey, if you think this is the way public servants act, then, you know, you're probably a maggot. I'll talk to you guys later.